Greetings and welcome once again to my new calculus channel. And today I'm going to discuss Euler's blunder. So, yes, Euler wasn't bad at mathematics, but he wasn't that great either. And, you know, um, he actually wrote a few things in his elements of algebra, or should I call them algebraish, that have caused a lot of problems. So let's look at one of those uh, definitions that Euler came up with. Okay, so he says here in his elements of algebra, Daher ist unser Bruch, 1 over 1 plus a, gleich dieser unendlichen Reiche, 1 minus a plus a a minus a, a cubed, etc. What that means is literally <coughs> word for word translation. Therefore, is our fraction, this fraction, equal this unending series or infinite series, okay? So he actually defined S to be lim S. So now there are a lot of mainstream academics who love to argue with that, even though it's as clear as water. And they don't even realize that their famous icon, um, the guy who wrote Rudin's analysis or principle of mathematical analysis, has exactly the same view. So he says, the symbol for, we call an infinite series or just a series. Okay, so this is called just a series. It is, doesn't matter that you call it an infinite series. It doesn't mean it's infinite. I mean, I can call something, you can call something uh, by an attribute that it doesn't have. It doesn't mean that it has that attribute. Okay, so the numbers Sn are called the partial sums of the series. So if Sn converges to S, we say that the series converges and we write that this expression is equal to s. Now notice, the number s is called the sum of the series, but it should be clearly understood that s is the limit of a sequence of sums. Okay, so it's not really the sum, it's the limit of a sequence of sums, and is not obtained sim simply by addition. Okay, so notice again, it states clearly, but it should be clearly understood that S is the limit of a sequence of sums and is not obtained simply by addition. So a series is simple, simply a partial sum. There is no such thing as an infinite series. If you write that, that is not an infinite series. It's only a partial sum, this partial sum, followed, followed by the addition sign and, and the ellipsis. Nothing more, nothing less. It's 100% finite. So next, a sequence is obtained from a series. Any guesses? Yeah, let's see how. The terms of the sequence are obtained from the partial sums. So in the example 0 0.3, 0 0.03, etc., the partial sums are given as follows, 0 0.3, 0 0.33, 0 0.333, etc., okay? And we have a nice formula, which you see down here, that gives us the terms of the sequence, okay? Now, in analysis, we consider what happens as the number of terms in any partial sum increases or decreases indefinitely. There's nothing about infinity there, people. Nothing. It's got nothing. Infinity is a garbage concept. Doesn't exist, can't be re reified in any way. It's total bullshit. So we consider what happens as n increases indefinitely. And if it does, we find that this fraction here decreases in indefinitely and that the whole expression tends toward three towards a third okay but this never becomes zero it's impossible for it to become zero because if you say that then you're claiming that there is an n such that this here is equal to zero that's moronic okay so to reason as that swiss moron euler reasoned that one of the infinities in reality is simply nothing is to reason like an idiot Okay, because in order for that ratio to become zero, this ratio here, this, this expression, there must be, there must exist some n such that zero is equal to that. There is no such n. Do you understand that? You cannot find such an n. Now, if this decreases indefinitely, then the partial sum increases indefinitely to one third, but never becomes a third. So it's utterly nonsense to take uh, a series and define it as equal to its limits. So that means what what uh, Euler did was he took a series, uh, took a series like that, okay, 
and he defined this series 0 0.333 dot 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 as equal to its limit that's total garbage okay it's never equal to its limit and in fact there's a theorem that proves one third has no measure in base 10 this is a base 10 measure it, a third cannot be measured in base 10 people why because 3 is not a factor of 10 in order to be measurable in base 10 it must have the prime factors either 2 or 5 and both okay or both so this this is totally wrong and this has been pointed out to the assholes of the church of academia for a long time and they still don't get it so what does Euler's blunder say effectively it says that the series s this series which is given by this expression here is equal i'm saying it's not equal to but he's saying it's equal to the limit but these two expressions here are different things okay this here does not actually mean limit as n approaches infinity it means an actual sum in their case that's what they, they that's how they like to interpret it and then they say oh yes 0 0.333 dot 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 represents a third bullshit it does not it never represents a third okay never ever ever so this article to which i'll place a link has the original german in it and explains all the intricacies around this showing you that you know whatever you conclusion you reach in, from reading the, the german itself you'll see that what i'm telling you is exactly what euler believed okay so euler says um in paragraph 298 exactly what i read out to you earlier hence the fraction is equal to this infinite series and again in 298 euler leaves no doubt that s equals to lemes as he states this clearly and not just with examples as one sees in the previous cases in these cases here he just does some examples but then here he moves away from the examples and he says yep this is the general case okay so as a result of that we have fallacious definitions or ill-formed definitions such as 0 0.333 dot 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 equal to third um there is an important number theorem which i'll place a link to that says given any fraction p over q then an equivalent fraction can be found in base b if and only if all the prime factors of this q are also factors of b in no other case can you express it and you can't write dot 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 uh, at the end of a partial sum and say that represents a number because the measure is never complete this here is a measure people okay when we write 0 0.333 what do we mean we mean three tenths plus three hundredths plus three thousandths that's not a third and it doesn't matter how many terms you add on it will never be a third it will never reach a third so it's wrong to equate a series to its limit okay wrong they're not the same object this here is a series and this here is a limit or or some kind of a, a, a convergent value to which the, ser the the series approaches so they're not the same thing okay ever and of course a series has a certain property it has a general term okay there are lots of things one can learn about this but i'm not going to uh, belabor the point i'm going to leave it there and let you read these articles and place a link to the most important uh, number theorem. And that's pretty much it. If you're not already a subscriber, become a subscriber. Follow me on Academia. I'll place a link to that too. And if you're feeling generous, you can donate at a GoFundMe link. I'm John Gabriel, and this is a new Calculus Channel. Till next time, goodbye.